Hey guys, welcome to Infamex. In this video, I will talk about introductory of two fundamental concepts in mathematics, namely logic and sets. Please subscribe, click the bell, like, share, and put your comments below. In mathematics, there are objects and sentences. An object is a well-defined entity with properties and can be operated with defined operations. For example, two, number, circle, matrix, and so on. An object can be referred by a symbol, a name, a word, or a description. For example, the number two. We can use this symbol. We can also use the word two. And also the description, the even prime number. They all refer to the same object. Object 1 plus 1 has a different name from object 2, but both of them refer to the same object. So we put the sign equal to connect the two of them, and form the sentence 1 plus 1 equal 2. 1 plus 1 equal 2 is a sentence, a declarative sentence that can be evaluated either true or false, but not both. It's called a proposition. The sentence 1 plus 1 equal 2 is an example of a proposition and has the value true. The sentence 1 plus 2 equal 4 is also a proposition and has the value false. The sentence the water is hot, not a proposition, because hot is not clear. Is hot 100 degrees or more, or is it 30 degrees or more? A proposition cannot be an object but a combination of objects connected by a connector, such as equal sign or less than sign. For example, 2 plus 3 is an object and not a proposition. 6 minus 1 is also an object and not a proposition. But when we put a connector equal sign between them, it becomes 2 plus 3 equals 6 minus 1. This is a proposition which has value true. So the equal sign indicates that both objects refer to the same object and therefore we say that they are equal. A proposition can be expressed in many ways. For example, the proposition 2 less than 3 and the proposition 3 greater than 2 are the same proposition. Therefore, we put the equivalent sign between them. So 2 less than 3 is equivalent to 3 greater than 2. So equal sign is to indicate that the objects are the same, whereas the equivalent sign indicates that both propositions are the same. The sentence 2 bigger than 3 is a proposition. Now, if we replace the position of 2 in this proposition with x, it becomes x bigger than 3. Now, we cannot say that this sentence is true or false. It depends on the value of x. When x equals 2, then the sentence is a proposition with value true. When x equals 1, then the sentence is a proposition with value false. Greater than 3 is the predicate and x is a variable. So if p is the predicate greater than 3, then px means x greater than 3. And P4 means 4 greater than 3, which is a true proposition. Now, look at these objects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we group them like this, 1, 3, 5 in group A, 2, 4, 6 in another group B. Can we say that A is a group of odd numbers? Well, they are odd numbers indeed. But is it enough to describe group A? If yes, why the objects 7 and 9 are not in A? Well, a better description is that there are odd numbers between 0 and 6. Now, this is what is meant with well-defined. It is so defined such that one can tell which objects are members and which are not members of the group. It is so defined such that there is no ambiguity to include or exclude an object in the group. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Note that the members should be distinct. So same objects will only be represented by one. 
Examples, a group of beautiful girls. This is not a set because definition of beautiful can be different for each person. A group of hot days in September. This is also not a set because definition of hot is not clear. Is it more than 40 degrees Celsius or 35 degrees Celsius or what? A group of students of age 20. This is also not a set. Age 20 when? Now? This month? Or what? A set can be presented in many ways with advantages and disadvantages. Number 1. Description Example the set of odd numbers between 0 and 6. Another example the set of integers between 0 and 5. An advantage of description is that it can just define a set of abstract objects in a sentence. But description sometimes can cause ambiguity. 2. Enumeration This is by listing members of the set. Curly brackets are used for this and the members are separated by commas. Example, open curly bracket, 1, 2, 3, close bracket. An advantage of this notation is that the members are listed and so we can see them. A disadvantage of this notation is when the set has many or even worse, infinitely many members. In this case, triple dots or ellipses is used, indicating that the sequence continues according to the pattern. For example, 1, 2, 3 ellipses. This indicates the sequence of positive integers is ascending order. It is assumed that the pattern is understood. The members explicitly listed should get enough information about the pattern. For example, 1, 3 ellipses. The members listed do not give enough information about the pattern. What is the next member? Is it 5? Suppose that is the set of positive odd numbers. Or is it 6? If it is the set of triangular numbers. When used in the middle of a list, the ellipsis stands for terms not listed, but which follow the pattern. For example, 2, 4, 6, ellipsis 100. Indicates the set of even numbers from 2 to 100. Number 3. Characterization. A set can be denoted in this form. Open bracket, ex bar cx close bracket. ex is an expression of x. Bar is read as such that or where. And cx is the condition of x. Example, open bracket 2x plus 1, where x is 0, 1, 2, and so on. This is the set of positive odd numbers. An advantage of this notation is it defines precisely the set and get rid of ambiguity. But this advantage of this notation is sometimes it is difficult to find a notation for some sets even for a simple set. For example, the set minus 5, 3, 100, 101, which is better to use the enumeration notation. 4. Fan diagram. The set is usually pictured as a circle or ellipse, and the members are listed inside the circle or ellipse. Example, the set of 1, 2, 3, 4. Is put in a Venn diagram like this. This diagram is introduced by John Fenn in 1880. This presentation is very useful to express visualization, relation with other sets, and operations on sets. A disadvantage of this notation is it takes space to draw. So it depends on the situation which notation is to be used. Here are some notations commonly used. U is a universal set. It is the set containing all members under consideration. The empty set. This is a set without any member. If X is a member of set S, then we denote like this. If Y is not a member of set S, then we use this symbol. This is the complement of set S which covers all items outside as set S. If each member of set A is also member of set B, then we say A is a subset of B and use this symbol. 
set difference of set A and set B is denoted by A minus B, which contains all members of A which are not in B. Cardinality of set A is the number of members of set A. For example, if the universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the set A is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the set B is 4 and 5, then 1 is a member of A, 5 is not a member of A, and an A complement contains 5 and 6, and A minus B equal 1, 2, 3, that is set A without 4 because 4 is a member of B. The cardinality of A is 4 and B is 2. The sets of well-known numbers are denoted as follows. N is for the natural numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now notice that some people prefer to define natural numbers starting from 1. C for the set of integers 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on to the negative infinity 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on to the positive infinity. Q is the set of rational numbers, that is the set of A over B, where A and B are integers and B is not zero. Examples of members is this set are a half, 2 over 3, 6 over 2 which is 3, and infinitely many more. R is the set of real numbers, this contains all numbers we can think of. C is a set of complex numbers. The structure of these sets are as follows. N is a subset of Z. The negative numbers belong to the N complement. Z is a subset of Q. A half is an example of a member in Q but not in Z. Q is a subset of R. Square root of 2 is an example of a member in R but not in Q. It is an example of an irrational number. R is a subset of C. The complex number I is an example of a member in C, but not in R. Now we can present a set express one notation to other notations. For example, 1. Find the enumeration and characterization notations for the set A of positive multiple of 3. So, this set contains all positive multiple of 3, that is A is the set of 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. So in characterization notation, it is the set A equals to the set of 3 times N plus 3, where N is member of natural numbers. 2. Find the enumeration notation for the set B which equals to n square, where n is member of natural members. So the set B is 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. 3. Find the characterization notation for the set D, which equals to minus 1, 0, 3, 8, 15, and so on. Now these numbers are 1 less than the square numbers above. So, the set D is n squared minus 1, where n is member of natural numbers. 4. List all members of the set of x where 2 times x equal to y and x is member of the natural numbers, and y is at most 6. So, we are looking for all natural numbers such that when we multiply them with 2, the result is at most 6. They are 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the x's. Because when we double them, we get 0, 2, 4, 6. That is, at most 6. These are the y's. 5. List all members of the following set in enumeration notation. Set of x where x squared is y and x is member of integers and y is member of 1, 4, 9. So we are looking for the integers. So this includes the negative whole numbers, which square is 1, or 4, or 9. 
So they are minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2, and 3. Express the following sets in Venn diagrams. A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. B is 4, 5, 6. Now these sets can be put in Venn diagrams like so. But also like so. Now you can try these. See you in the next video.